welcome to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Hi, my name is Michelle Steele. And I am Annette Caps, and we're going to be talking about an important subject today, so stay tuned. As we move into this teaching about the tongue, a creative force, I want you to take off any preconceived notions that you may have concerning the power of your words, move away from any religious tradition, and let the Word of God speak to you today, because we are talking about what the Scripture says concerning the power and the authority of your words. And this is a standard or a base or a foundation for every area of your life. It's not just for a certain times in church or in prayer, but this is for every area of your life. And it's one of the keys to your victory in every area. And I'm going to start with the book of James chapter three and verse two. It says, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn the whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm wherever the governor desires or whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things, Behold how great a matter a little fire kindles. And somebody said there's nothing about words in the Bible. <laughs> they have it. They need to pick <laughs> up the Bible and read the Bible. God began with words. He said the entire universe is sustained by the word of his power. Yeah. There's so much that our words affect. Our whole life. Yes. Our world. Everything is determined by words. You use the example, people usually say what they're going to do before they do it. Yes. I'm going to go on vacation next month. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Or I'm not going to do this. Or I'm not going to do that. And you think those words don't have power? I've heard people say, well, they don't really mean what they say. Oh, yeah. People really do say exactly what they mean. And they say what they think, and they say what they believe. Yes. So if you're continually saying things about your finances, like we'll never get out of debt, it seems like the harder we try, the worse it gets. We'll save money, and then what do you know? The car breaks down. The washing machine breaks down. And what they don't realize is when the car broke down, they said, well, the washing machine's probably next. <laughs> and they mean it as a joke. It's yeah. almost like they that people are conditioned, and I say they because I was that person before I learned yeah. this truth of the Bible, it, would, it, it was a, a way of responding. It was a yes. trained way. It was a, a, I had conditioned myself and I would make it sound like I was being trivial or joking yes. or, yes. you know, too much month at the end of the money. <laughs> like it was just a joke. Yeah. But, you know, when yeah. you really start thinking about how the authority that you have as a believer yes. and that your words can sign for it or refuse it, yes. you know? And so w this is something that we can, like James said, we can turn situations with the, the bit in the horse, the horse's mouth. You know, I've watched a lot of Westerns and I've never seen the cowboy jump off the horse, pick him up and turn him around <laughs> to get him to change directions. What, you know, you, that, that huge yeah. horse that could be, you know, 1,500 yeah, pounds. Yeah, it's what, the mouth. Just that little two and a yeah. half inch, three inch piece of metal is yeah. putting pressure on the tongue, yeah. and that pressure on the tongue can cause that enormous animal to turn wherever yeah. you want him to turn. Yeah. 
the the realm the it says the the um rudder on the ship can turn the entire ship just a little rudder in comparison to the size of the That's ship right. That's right. And so just little things. And you talked in the last session about your dad, and, and he wrote the book, The Tongue, A Creative Force, that we're talking about today, how that he began speaking negative because of a bad business mm -hmm. deal, and that negative speaking turned his entire farming industry that had once been very successful. He'd done it yes. all of those years successfully. He was skilled and proficient in it, but with his words... He began speaking that I'm not going to do it right, and I'm going to make the wrong choice, and I'm going to plant too and deep. He did. And, and he did. And those words conditioned him to make the wrong decisions right. and affected his finances until it turned. He said at one time he, did, he worked all year long and didn't make enough money to renew his driver's license. That's right. <laughs> Whatever That's right. $12 or something it would have cost That's right. to renew his license. And so... God brought him the word and mm -hmm. he put the word in his heart and in his mouth and with oh, in about a year's time he turned it back. Yes. Well, and you you bring out an important point. I mean, James says how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire and it kindles. And you see the first time you say things like too much month <laughs> At the end of the money, the first time you say, well, it'll probably be the washing machine next, and after that, the dryer. Yes. And the first time my dad said, well, I probably won't make enough money this year to pay my drivers. The first time he said that, the first time you said that, you probably didn't really believe it. You were just throwing it out there. But Mark eleven twenty three and 24 tells us that believeth that those things that he saith will come to pass, Ooh. he will have whatsoever he says. Yes. If you believe what you say comes to pass, you'll have whatever you say. Now, the first time you said it, you probably didn't believe it. Just like with this little book we were talking about last program. You know, you're confessing the word, for poverty he has given me wealth, for sickness he has given me health, for death he has given me eternal life, and it's true unto me according to the word of God. The first time you say it, maybe you didn't believe it. But you keep saying it and you will believe it. Yes. And once you believe those things you're saying will come to pass, they will come to pass. Now, here's the thing about it. You have to believe your words are powerful. And if you're missing the whole thing in the Bible about how powerful your words are, then you're going to just sit around and say all these foolish things and wonder why God's doing this to me. Listen, the devil doesn't need help with a lot of people because they're digging their grave with their words. They're tearing up their finances. They're tearing up their, their family and everything else with the words of their mouth. The devil doesn't need a lot of help. What he's done is he's blinded the church and blinded people's minds of how powerful their words are and that if you believe what you say comes to pass, you will have whatever you say. Now, I remember, and I've told this before, that I didn't always believe everything I said came to pass, and I confessed the words. I read The Tongue of Creative Force by Charles Caps. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, sat in meetings, times. He pre I heard him one time preach nearly three hours. And um, so I've heard, what I'm saying is I've heard, heard this message a lot, but until I began to say it and say it and say it and began to cut out the bad stuff, See, that's a really important part of what you're reading from James, is to stumble not in what you say. Yes, because the, your dad brought out in the book the word offend, when it says, if any man offend not in word, that word offend means to stumble. To stumble. Wow. If you, don't, if you don't cut out the foolish speech, the stumbling speech, then you will not have any faith in your words, and you'll just throw them out there and let whatever spirit act upon them, either the spirit of God or guess who's on the other side. I mean, it's very simple. You're either speaking words of life to yourself, your family, your finances, every area of your life, or you're speaking words of death. Now, you maybe you're speaking both of them. Just mix them all up. Well, Jesus said that out of the mouth cometh forth blessing and cursing. These things ought not to be. Yes, he said out of the abundance of the heart. What is in abundance in the heart will is going to come out of the mouth. So in order to, and we talked last session about 
taking these words and uh, speaking the Word of God, and I'm just using the little book here, which is part of this book, is confessions. It is changing what's on the inside of you. And once you get changed on the inside and you start believing the Word of God is true for you, it is true in me, then is when what you speak comes to pass. The first part is confessing it to get it in your heart. The second part is speaking it where it comes to pass, in the physical realm. It has to change in the spiritual realm first, in your heart. And then it gets changed in the physical realm. In order to confess and create on the outside of you, you've got to change the inside of you the first. Inside. Can I tell you the first time I ever really applied that principle in my life? Yes. My husband and I, we were not poor, we were po. <laughs> we couldn't afford the O-R on the end of the word. We were in a financial, I mean, we were just financially under, under. And the Lord dealt with us to take 30 days, 40 days, and just been focusing on scriptures and the word concerning our, the financial blessing of God. And part of what I did was what your dad taught. I took scriptures about what God said about my financial condition, and I would, in the morning, speak them. I would get up before I was babysitting children at the time, and before any of them would come, I would get up and I would confess those scriptures. I would do it while I laid them down for the nap. I'd put them down for a nap, and I would go, go over these scriptures, and then again at night. And the first day, I felt like my faith came out of my mouth and just like a feather <laughs> floated down to the ground. It had no power because I didn't believe a thing I was saying. Yeah, yeah. I was saying, I'm the head, not the tail. And I'm like, I'm the tail right now. You know, I'm, the, I'm the tail. It's bad here. I mean, we were eating beanie weenies and so, and Carl Buddingham, it was bad. And so I'm, I'm confessing the word and it's just floating down. Yeah. Within that first 30 days of speaking this word, one day, and I did it the same thing I had done every day before, but I opened up my Bible and I spoke the same scripture that I'd been speaking for 30 days, and it came out like it was aimed at a target, like a bullet, and went, yeah. and I knew yeah. something was yeah. different. I knew this is, this is different. Because it took me that 30 days of that emphasis and cutting every other voice out of my life. Yeah. We didn't watch TV. We yeah. didn't listen to other teachings just on. But that scripture had been building in my heart. It was like my tank was empty the first day and yeah. I had feather faith that just floated yeah. down. Yeah. But now I had faith that was targeted and it came out like a speeding bullet and hit the target. Yeah. And I knew if you would have asked me if I had faith, 30 days before, I would have thought, I would have said, yeah, I got faith, I got faith. I didn't know what faith was <laughs> till it came out of my mouth. But that day I knew something has changed. Yeah. And it changed in me first, but it didn't get applied to my life until it came out of my mouth. And when it came out of my mouth, it shocked me. Yeah. And within about a month and a half, God so turned our lives from where we were and put us on the track to where we are now, it was supernatural, but it started with his word just being planted in my heart. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever told you that no, story. No, you haven't. And that is such a powerful story. I love that because that's where so many people are. They're out there and they're, they're, they're saying the words and, and no one they're supposed to say it, but nothing is happening. But don't get discouraged because faith comes. Yes. It comes in your heart. And then one day you open your mouth and out it comes. Just like you said, and it's like an arrow. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And the anointing and the power and the life in that word will produce, it will come out of you like a sword, like an arrow to change the circumstances in your life. Just the word is powerful. It's the yes. most powerful thing that we have. And so if we 
if we don't take that word and put it in our heart, not just read it and go, oh yeah, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus, but put it in our heart and then speak it. Yes, it's kindling the fire. Yes. When you're looking at a fire, you're, it, 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 what, you don't see what it, caused, what it took to start that fire. Yeah. And people might look at my life today, but they don't see what it took yeah. to start the fire that's burning today yeah. or in CAPS ministry. It started with your dad with the, the paper on a legal yellow pad of the scriptures and then, you yeah. know, moved to that. But he took the word and he put it in his heart and yeah. it kindles the fire. Yeah. You know, I remember when I first started in the ministry, of course, um, my dad had just started speaking. And so I started getting invitations to minister and I would go, and so I didn't tell my dad or my mom anything about the finances of the ministry, you know, about what happened when I went places. But anyway, I, I didn't have money. Now, if I'd asked my dad if I could have money to go do this or you know, my mom, they would have given me money. They'd given me gas money. They'd give me money to stay in a hotel. But you know what I thought? I thought either, either the words in that Bible are true, either the word works or it doesn't. And if it works for them, it'll work for me. If not, it's not true. And so I took that word and I began to speak and say, God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I have abundance. There is no lack. God supplies my need. Thank you. I have given. It's given unto me. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. to men give unto my bosom. Yes. And I said those words and I'd take off across the country and I had a car and I had a pup tent. You know what a pup tent is? It's just enough room to slide in. And I had a uh, the trunk of my car. I had a pork and beans. I had bread. I had some soup. I had things like that. And I stayed in KOA campgrounds, and I would be invited to minister, and I'd believe God for the finances to come in. And <laughs> It wasn't very glamorous, i got to tell you putting on your makeup and everything in a pup tent is kind of hard. But anyway, <laughs> I would go minister. I thought, God, you, your word says you supply my needs, so you're going to take care of me, I, you know. And there were times that I went and ministered. And my, I remember one particular place. They allowed, allowed us to stay in somebody's house that was on vacation, and they turned the hot water tank off, so I had no hot water. And my offerings for that two, three night thing was $3 and 26 cents, something oh like that. Goodness. Three is a little over $3. And you know what? I didn't look at that and go, Oh God, yep. Then work. Nope. I just said, thank you, God. Your word's true. You supply all my need according to riches and glory. You know why? Because I was moved by what the word of God says. Yes. And it says God supplies my need. And I've spoken that word. I believe it in my heart and I've spoken it. And you know what? God would miraculously provide for me when I would go. Someone would come up and say, God told me to give you this. God told me to give you this. Praise God. God told me to pay for your hotel. Oh, thank God I don't have to sleep in a pup tent. <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to know, is the word of God true or not? Yes. And so I took God at his word, and then I took his words, and I put them in my mouth, and I began to speak. And I spoke the end result that my needs would be supplied. And, you know, gradually, it didn't happen overnight, but gradually, I went from driving a, a Chevy van to driving another car to this, to gradually things improved until finally, I, actually, I was believing for and confessing. I knew God wanted me to have an airplane. And so I got a small airplane. One that I could fly. I didn't believe God for a jet at that point because I didn't know how to fly a jet. I knew how to fly a small airplane. So I ended up, and God moved on people to give me some money that I was able to get that airplane. So it was a progression. It was a progression, but first I had to stop the negative the speaking. Negative. I had to stop the negative speaking. Well, we got $3.26 on this meeting I wonder what we'll get on the next one, $3.25? <laughs> no, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. I'm telling you what, it affects me. I believe so much in the power of the tongue, the power of words now, and what God said about it, 
that when somebody says something like that, it just literally, it's like somebody cussing or worse. Yes. Because I know what they're releasing out of their mouth. And you know what? It's like a magnet. It attracts. If you're speaking negative words, it attracts negativity. It just comes to you. Well, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope, it, you're, it, it's attracting what you're hoping for. Yeah. And if you're dreading and you're speaking words of dread out, it's attracting what you're dreading, That's like right. a magnet. My dad said, uh, fear is faith in reverse. Yes, yes. And speaking words of fear will bring more fear, multiply fear, and it will bring the fear, thing you fear upon you. One of the things that he taught in the book was about the law of words, uh, the spiritual law, that the, your words activate spiritual law. And just like in the natural, electricity yes. can be dangerous for you if you use it inappropriately. If you try yes. to grab hold of a live wire, if you, you know, that wrong use, wrong violation of the laws of electricity is going to, that violation is going to cause damage. But if you use it correctly, if you, if you respect the laws yes, respect. of the electricity, it'll benefit you yes. and provide all kinds of, of uh, advancements for your yes. life. And the same is true with words. If we violate that law of words, by mm -hmm. using our words inappropriately, using our words to invite destruction, using our words to uh, curse what God has blessed, yes. then it's going to destroy. But God intended for us to use our words for our lives to be profitable. That's right. That's right. Words are very powerful and it can either be used negatively or positively. But just speaking positive words doesn't you know, because I mean, there's there's groups of people that say, oh, I'm going to affirm that I'm good. I'm going to affirm yeah, self -talk. this. Self-talk. Yeah, I'm going to affirm this. And, you know, and, and they're using it just on the basis of a general concept. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's better than saying I'm rotten and bad. That's better. But there's a difference in just saying that good stuff about yourself and saying what God said about you. Yes. Because there's life and power in this word. There is a seed in this word that will plant in your heart that will explode from the inside of you and produce life and life more abundantly. Yes, creative power. Creative power, preach it. <laughs> That's that, good. That good, good, creative good. power, like he said, I'm gonna read the quote again. God's word that is conceived Seeds. in your heart then formed by the tongue and spoken out of your mouth becomes a spiritual force releasing the ability of God within you. And that's what we've been talking about today. We've been talking about God's power, God's word. And the way to get God's word operative in your life is to put it in your heart and in your mouth, in your mouth and in your heart, in your heart and in your mouth and in your mouth and in your heart until it is conceived and or the seed comes up as a harvest of faith. And then you begin to speak that word into your situation and it will go into that situation and turn it. It will go in that situation and cause the blessing and cancel out the curse. And so it'll bring healing and cancel out that sickness. It's God's word, but we have a part to play in putting it into manifestation in our life. We've got more to say about it. I know you've been blessed by this time to get in the word. And I've been blessed. Thank you for being here with me. <laughs> wow, what a great program. We all need to be reminded of the importance of our words and how they create for us, for good or for not. This book we've been discussing today is called The Tongue, A Creative Force. And I'm offering this power-packed 193-page book and including our three best-selling mini books for only $19. And that includes shipping. That's a great deal. You will receive four books, The Tongue of Creative Force, God's Creative Power Will Work for You, God's Creative Power for Healing, God's Creative Power for Finances, 
And I want to throw in one of our pamphlets called Words Change or Establish Circumstances or something like Words Transmit Images. We'll send you our, one of our latest pamphlets. That's all for $2,500, four books for $19. Call 877-396-9400 or go to caps.tv and it will take you directly to our TV offers. You know, I make these offers available because I believe in the power of the Word of God to change lives, situations, and circumstances. Yes. Michelle, I can't tell you how many testimonies we receive every week from people who have been healed by confessing the scriptures in these little books. Physical healing from every kind of ailment, deliverance from anxiety, stress, fear, healing of their finances by speaking the Word of God. You know, when people change what they are saying, they change their lives. Yes. It's not too late for you. Amen. God's Word is powerful when you speak it out of your mouth and proclaim what God says about you. This teaching will give you what you need to turn your boat around. Call now, 877-396-9400. The number should be on the screen. That's all for 2500, four books for $19, which includes shipping. Now that is a deal. Michelle, I really feel like we need to pray for people today. I'd like for you to stretch your hand out toward the television set. Father, in the name of Jesus, there are people right now listening that are suffering financially, mentally, emotionally. They're suffering in their family. They're suffering the results of bad speaking. They're suffering results of the work of the devil. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray that the word of the living God and the anointing of God will flow to them right this moment, that it will bring forth what they've heard, this message and the power of words, and that they will go to your word and receive all that you have for them in Jesus' name. And remember, if you put God's Word to work in your life, you will be glad that you did. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.